everyone, Amanda here, thanks for joining me again. So I'm here again making a mindful mess uh, in my art journal. It's just my latest um, fad. <laughs> I'm a typical crafter and I do flip from one kind of craft to another and try and master as many as I can before I leave this world. <laughs> um, to me, um, all kinds of craft or art, I want to try everything. Um, because I just I just love it. I love and I really love messy crafting. So art journaling is a really mindful thing for me to do lately. If I feel like I'm stuck, like I don't have any inspiration, I know that I can get my art journal out and just make a big old mess and something will come together at the end. Um, I say a lot on my channel, it's a trust the process thing and I like it because you just... Um, let yourself go and don't worry okay so here I'm using some acrylic paints I like acrylic paints because you can kind of blend them together a little bit um, and they don't seem to go muddy I really struggle with some uh, medias I struggle with the Tim Holtz distress sprays things like that I end up with dark colours and I really don't like it if I'm doing art journaling I want bright vibrant fun colours and so Acrylic paint is just a, a great way of, of me starting and getting used to how things look and which colours look nice together. I'm still very much learning, um, but as I progress through this page, I know for a fact that the bright pink and that turquoise blue there are fantastic colours. And when they're mixed together, I get a lovely purple colour. And so I'll bear that in mind on another project where I want those colours. And I'll know that they go nice together. Um, I watched uh, I watch a lot of um, art journaling tutorials at the moment because I just want to learn and I'm soaking everything up like a sponge and I watched one lady and she just used her hands to cover the background with paint and I just thought how cool is that because you know I think we can get um, wrapped up too much in brush marks and things not looking blended and literally just put it on your hands and then I put a few colours together smooshed my fingers together like a toddler and got like this rainbow effect and I just loved it um, so all that's doing is just covering up that white space with lots of different colour and then we're going to layer over so that's not the finished item so basically all you're doing is just covering with lots and lots of different colours um, just to add interest to your page that you're going to see through um, from the other things that you layer on top. So I'm drying off the acrylic paint um, to start and add some layers on. So once I've done my background then I start and stencil. Again I'm still very much learning. I've got a nice selection of stencils and it's learning which ones are the best for this kind of thing. Um, and that larger one there I decide not to use and go for the smaller one. Now in hindsight that was a bit of a mistake and I would say go for the bigger ones to start with and then use the smaller ones for small detail. Here I'm trying to frame my picture with the small ones and it just doesn't quite work. I do adjust it later on um, and make the page work and also um, that yellow paint that I'm using there is too light. It's too much of a light colour to go over, the, over that pink. It needs a bolder colour. Um, so there's another thing that I've learned from doing this today and I do think also um, sometimes layering over with gesso you can get white gesso you can get black gesso which I'm going to invest in um, I, but the good thing about that is you can change your mind you know I wiped it off I realized you know maybe that color is not strong enough and I wiped it off and I keep going so I've got a little paint palette at the side of me and I've decided that that turquoise is a more bold colour and that works nice. Okay, so and then uh, knowing that the pink one is a nicer bold colour, um, I'll use that later. So I'm trying again with this yellow. <laughs> I will take, move, going forward I will know not to layer up with um, paler colours uh, on the top. They need to be bolder colours or darker colours okay so it's all about um the, the whole process of art journaling is about learning and as i go through my journal um you know the process will get easier for me because i'll have made my mistakes early on and i'll know what i'm doing 
Um, one um, piece of uh, advice that I give you that I've um, started doing is gluing two pages together. This is not a mixed media book. This is just a cheap scrapbook. Um, so, uh, you know, um, from the range. I think it was like five pounds. But it's a nice weight of paper and for I'm going to keep it just mainly acrylics I won't do a lot of spraying or a lot of watercolouring in this one I'll keep it to a minimum because it's not watercolour paper um, I'm going to get myself I have discovered that you know different mediums need different paper but with this one if you glue two pages together it makes it really thick and sturdy and so it doesn't warp as much when you're adding your paint and um, which then obviously makes it easier for you to stencil etc on top so I've decided that this journal is going to be my bold colours art journal and it will be mostly what I call dry medias so acrylic paint uh, because the way I put it on it's not going to saturate the page okay so it's not going to go warped and bubbly and I'll invest or make my own journal with watercolour paper or, or heavier mixed media paper if I want to use um, watercolor, you know, watercolor paints or sprays. So that's another learning process that I've discovered through starting my um, art journaling process. Now I've got a few art journals. I've labelled what goes in which, and uh, so this is my bold and bright. <laughs> I've uh, made myself a one for collage, one for that's a vintage theme one, one that's a shabby theme one. Um, I'm going to get another one for napkin art, although I might incorporate napkin in here. And and then I'm I'm going to make myself a, a one for if I want to do a lot of watercolouring, um, with some some better quality paper. So I found this stamp in my collection. It's an old uh, Stampin' Up one, and I wanted to I want to practice with shading. And the easiest way to do that is with circles. You know, uh, making like bubbles. Um, so I'm trying to teach myself where light and dark is and how to shade correctly and how to make things look a bit more kind of dimensional with more depth. That's the idea. Um, and I will probably do a few different ones using these, these two stamps with these circles. I wish I had another smaller one so that I had three different sizes, but I've got what I've got. I'm not, um, you know... It, I'll manage and uh, so this one I've done with acrylics and I'm going to be using um, to fill the circles I'll show you later I'm going to be using some pastels and I'm going to do another one um, with some um, ink tense blocks and ink tense pencils so I can see the difference between my supplies and how they work so I'll probably do circles and again another day um, for that reason and it's a great way of practicing if you don't have a circle stamp um, you can just draw around something with a, a permanent black um, marker a sharper even um, or a permanent pigment pen um, so in the circles here I'm painting over inside with gesso and I'm using my paintbrush so that I can be nice and accurate and still keep that crisp black um, stamped outline um, I think I do fast forward past the paint part so that <laughs> because I you know I was being very careful um, but yeah I want to use a totally different medium on them in a moment from the acrylics so I've layered over and as you can see there I've used um, pastels I actually accidentally deleted that part of the video and um, where I was doing them um, I think I thought I would press play and I hadn't um, I took quite a while um, and you know did some shading and I really enjoyed it and I used some Derwent pastels and managed to get uh, a box of 36 the other day at an absolute rock bottom price um, from my local art shop as they were pre-loved but had actually never been used um, so yeah uh, I think I've got the shading kind of right I would have liked the um, darker bits to be darker but you know another thing you've got to learn and what I've got to learn is that art products will only do so much and sometimes I expect too much from them and so for a deeper darker more intense shade I, like I say I will do it again and I will try my ink tense inks which I know I've got a very deep 
um, strong pigment. These are pastels, so they're soft. But I think I don't think I've done bad there. And then I've just dotted round with a, a white gel pen, um, just around where I think the light's falling on those circles. So we've got a bit of depth. Um, you know, I'll get there uh, with practice. I'm just outlining all around my stencil bit with a, a skinny black permanent pen. Um, which actually then literally just runs out. I'm quite annoyed because I've only used it once. <laughs> and it just makes that pop and it makes it stand out and I like it now. Um, and then I've got it in my head that I want to add some black dots. And I don't know why because I don't know if it needed it. But I'm having a play and I'm experimenting. But I do like how those um, circles or bubbles... Go across the page from the top corner down to the bottom corner. I think they look really nice and they look soft. And it's uh, given me the opportunity to play with those pastels which are fun to use. You'll have to excuse the brightness here. It's early morning and the sun, it's beautiful weather. I'm not complaining but that sun um, can make my videos either too bright or too dark. I can't seem to win. So I'm using my little permanent pen there. And, uh, yeah, instead of, like, using black ink or black paint, because I just think that the pigment in that pen is darker, um, and so it'll give a more true black coverage. Um, I think I do... I think the pen starts to run out, and so I swap to a Sharpie later on, uh, which worked fine on this project, because it was over the top of acrylics. It worked perfect. So, yeah... Always have a Sharpie on hand because you can never go wrong if you want some uh, permanent black on your on your projects. Um, but different things will cover over different mediums in different ways, which is, uh, you know, why art journaling is really good because that's how you learn um, what goes where um, and what covers over things and what goes together great. I'm absolutely loving how this has turned out. I'm really enjoying doing the art journaling. As I say, I'm so, as you can see, I'm in my dressing gown. I got up super early and I just thought to myself, I'm going to get out of bed early this morning and I'm going to try and do my art journaling page, one page every day. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying it. So, you know, at some point, I'll just evolve into a fantastic artist. And, yeah, I look back on this art journal and think, blimey, Amanda, that is absolutely rubbish. <laughs> but for now, I'm really, really, I feel like a big sense of achievement. Um, I don't seem to struggle filling a page, you know, I don't um, worry about it. Um, so long as you just get that colour down first and cover up and, and you know, you've you've got your base layer and then... And then just start stamping and stenciling and whatever happens kind of happens. And that's the joy of art journaling. There's no right or wrong um, and it's just fun. And then you can add as much or as little extra detail on there as you like. And as, you, as I'm getting more confident, um, probably uh, will add more detail. Um, so then the small detail makes the larger things stand out more. That's kind of what I think. I don't know. I'm not an artist. Um, consider myself a crafter, but not an artist. But, you know, it's uh, learning the colours and learning the what goes together. And I just, I'm really enjoying it. Um, so some people will go, well, I watched you because you did Shabby Chic. Or I watched you because you did cards. Or I watched you because you did journaling. And, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a crafter. Uh, and by trade, we chop and change what we do from one week to the next. So, you know, I will still do all of the other things uh, that I've done previously. I'm still journaling, I'm still doing shabby stuff, I'm still doing everything. Um, but at the moment, I'm just really enjoying the art journaling. Um, that doesn't mean my channel is going to change into just art journaling. I'm very much, I do, every, I do a bit of, I'm a... Jack of all trades and master of none. That's the saying, isn't it? That's what I am. And um, that's what my channel's evolved to. It's not just one thing. Um, which, you know, they do say you should be consistent and stick to one. But I don't want to. I like to try everything. 
so if anybody's wondering why this is not a journaling video or a this or a that kind of video it's just um, a video of me enjoying creating and sharing that with you with the hope of inspiring somebody to have a go themselves so I've just stamped my sentiments and I'm gluing it on and uh, it didn't go on very straight didn't that I'm not gonna lie it's a little bit on the wonk but you know never mind it doesn't matter it's just a dark journal um, it's uh, as far as I'm concerned an art journal is a little bit like a textbook you're learning um, things and each page is something new that you've learned um, so yeah don't matter if it's wonky anyway <laughs> it gives it character I believe so that is my excuse and I am sticking to it so yeah making a sentiment using stamps that I've got um, and the ink that I've used throughout when I've been stamping is the archival, the black one, because it is waterproof. And I'm I, I'm a little bit sad that the um, part of the video where I did the um, pastel shading has uh, not saved. Um, but I was able to wipe around the circle where the pastel had gone past with a sea sponge, a very soft sea sponge, and wipe the excess off. And the um, the stamping stayed true and didn't smudge because the archival is waterproof. Shaking that glue, spend my life shaking uh, Beacon 3 and 1. <laughs> I like splitting up the sentiments. I don't want a long one all the way across in one place at the bottom. I like um, splitting them up, cutting them um, into sections and uh, there you go. Again, that's about as straight as a uh, well it's not <laughs> going around the edge with one of the uh, another pastel it's a black one and then I can just smudge it with my fingers um, and because it's acrylic paint if I've put a little bit too much on I can just wipe it off um, it'll be fine it'll be fine and that just all smudges nicely just frames it a little bit to finish the edge of the page but the focal point there are my shaded circles, which I'm quite pleased with. I think uh, I think I've done an, an all right job there. I can't wait to try it with the ink tents. So there you go. Hope you like it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.